Good. Uh, hello, everyone. It's good to see you all here tonight. It's good to see the middle row back, to be honest. I was saying to Warner this morning, Moses came in, he parted the sea, and I am thankful for it, and I bet you are all as well. All these people sitting in the middle, you don't have to crawl over people to get out. It's a good thing. Also, can I just say, that Filipino singer tonight was just amazing. Like, where did Mitch get that voice from? Like, uh, who knew? Who knew? He's single. All right. <laughs> no, Danielle's not. The other Filipino is not. All right. We're going to just jump straight into it tonight. I'm excited that you're here. There's faith in the house. You know, Pastor Joe was, the worship was great. Pastor Joe has really stirred us tonight. And it's just, you know, it's all aligned. It's all kind of heading the same direction, which is always good, which always like makes the, the preacher feel good when everything seems to be pointing towards the word that God has given them. But before I get into it tonight, can I just have your attention? I know that like people zone out. Can I, is it fair to say that pretty much everyone here, I would say 99% of you who are here would like to say, like when you leave tonight, you would like to say that you received something from tonight. You would like to say that you got something out of tonight. I think that's fair to say that everyone would like that. I know it doesn't always happen, but I want to encourage you tonight. I was at a conference recently and the guest speaker said something along the lines of, you know, it just... Make a decision to get something out of tonight. I know it sounds weird. I know you're like looking at me right now and it's like, that's your job. That's your job to make sure I get something out of it. But I'm bringing a word from God and it actually is a bit of a two-way thing. So I encourage you, take a second now to just decide that you're gonna get something out, to look for something for yourself, to even pray, God, give me something out of this message. And even just a, a testimony around this, we're doubling up on this testimony almost, but I'm giving you part two. Pastor Mark shared it last week. But a couple of weeks ago, I was on my way to church and I was facing like a little bit of almost frustration, kind of with God, kind of not, kind of with myself. But I was heading to church and I was just thinking about our prayer times that we have in worship. And I was thinking about how every week we, uh, after, you know, in the middle of worship, we call people for, for prayer and we say, you know, we have an opportunity to pray for you. We're believing for miracles. And I say that when I'm worship leading, I say that and I believe it. I'm like, I believe that we can see miracles, that God can do something in your life. But I was just driving to church and I'm like, I haven't seen any miracles. I'm like, where are the miracles? I know they can happen. You know, I know they will happen. I have faith to see that they happen, but where are they? And so, you know, out of my frustration, after I had my little like tantrum, I, I prayed and I was like, God, this morning, I was, I was gonna be praying for people and I'm like, God, let something happen this morning when I pray for someone. Let, their, like, you know, let someone really receive a touch. I was like, there's people who are coming who need a touch and I'm like, God, let them receive a touch. And so it came to the time, come forward for prayer and I went over, stood by the side and I prayed for two people and I prayed for them and they didn't fall over. They didn't say like, thank you so much. Like that was exactly what I needed. I prayed for them and then I went back to my seat and I, to be honest, I didn't think of it much. I'd already kind of forgotten. And then this rest of the service happened and then the week happened. And then I received a call from Pastor Mark later in that week and he was just, you know, being a, a good boss and good pastor and just letting me know that he just received a testimony that uh, the one of the, the men that I'd prayed for had, it, the situation was with work and things were just terrible with work and the culture and the situation there and he just needed some relief from it. He was just like, I just need something. I just need an answer. I need so God to do something. And so I prayed for it and I, I just prayed that God would do something then, that God had him there for a purpose. And apparently the next day he went to work and everything was just completely different. Everything had changed. He was gonna take time off but then he didn't need to take that time off and God did something God touched that situation and after that I literally I hung up the phone and I laughed I'm like I, I just laugh because I'm like God you're good like do you know he it's obviously amazing for that man but just for me as well that God hears our prayers and God hears us when we ask for these things and you know we don't do things just to make ourselves feel good but after that I'm so built up in my faith and I'm just excited now just praying for people it's like I want to pray for people I want to pray for people because that happened and so even right now, we're not gonna pray for it right now, but even in your head, just God, I need something tonight. I wanna receive something. I wanna see something happen. Just say that to yourself tonight. But we're gonna get into the word. I believe I have a word tonight that's been sitting on my heart for a couple of weeks and uh, we're gonna dig into it. It is 2 Corinthians. We're starting in chapter four, verse 16. We're gonna end in chapter five, verse seven. So we're starting in chapter four, verse 16. So if you need to flick to your Bible, I'll give you a couple of seconds. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 16, tonight. All right. So starting in chapter 16, it'll be up on the screen. And it starts and it says, so we do not lose heart, amen. We do not lose heart. 
Though our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. For this light, momentary affliction is preparing, uh, uh, preparing for us an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. As we look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen are transient, but the things that are unseen are eternal. The things that are seen are only momentary. The things that are seen are temporary, but the things that are unseen are eternal, our heavenly dwelling. Verse, uh, chapter 5, verse 1. For we know that if the tent that is our earthly home is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this tent we groan, longing, some of us, this tent, our body, some people groan more than others. Uh, <laughs> Pastor Mark saying that there. In this tent we groan, longing to be put, uh, to put on our heavenly dwelling, if indeed by putting it on, we may not be found naked. For while we are still in this tent, we groan being burdened, not that we would be unclothed, but that we would be further clothed so that what is mortal may be swallowed up by life. He who has prepared us for this very thing is God, who has given us the Spirit as a guarantee. Remember that, that He has given us the Spirit as a guarantee. So we are always of good courage. We know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. And this is what it all comes to. Verse 7, for we walk by faith, not by sight. We walk by faith, not by sight. The, uh, tonight, my, my message is called the filter of faith. Turn to someone next to you and say, the filter of faith. Turn to the other person and say, I'm looking through the filter of faith. If you want an alternative title, it is live working, walking by faith. Uh, what's our theme this year? There you go. You got to do it. So that's a little subheading, live walking by faith. But the filter of faith, let's pray tonight. Lord, we just thank you that as we gather around your word, that you have a word for us specifically tonight, that every single person here, there's something that you wanna say to each person. It might not be the same, Lord, but you've prepared this word for every single person who is here. You have something for them tonight. And I just pray that as uh, I speak, Lord, it wouldn't be me that comes through, but Lord, it would be you, Father. It would be what you wanna say, God. And we just pray that you would receive glory from this, Lord. And we would leave tonight looking through the filter of faith. In Jesus' name, everybody said, amen. Amen. So church, here's a little fact about myself. Not everyone would know it. Actually, probably most people wouldn't know it, but some people would. And that is that I, unless I've said it on stage, that I am colorblind. I am actually colorblind. And the first thought that comes to everybody's head is they want to ask me, they're like, oh, what color is this? What color is this? They point something out. Every time I tell someone that I'm colorblind, they grab something, a certain color, and they're like, what's this? What's this? Or they ask like, oh, so can, you can't see any color at all. Like, it's just black and white. And I'm like, I can see color. It's a little bit different. I am terrible at the colorblind test, though. You know those, like, dots? You know all those dots? I just never, I can just never see them. I'm really relating to pastor. Are you colorblind, Pastor Mark? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just relating to my senior pastor right now because I just can never see anything in them. And oh, it's so annoying because people see it and they're like, ha, 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 I can see it and you can't. That's my brother. I was specifically quoting my brother right there. I've just never been able to see them just because I've been colorblind. Uh, you know, and people are always like, what color is this? What color is this? But I will let you know, while I am colorblind, uh, my auntie is an optometrist, like an eye doctor. And recently, I, she did like a, a colorblind kind of test on me to see how colorblind I am. And I'm either really good at being colorblind or I'm really bad because I'm like as the less, the least amount of colorblind that you can be. I put all the colors in the right order and everything like that. So I'm okay with that. But when it comes to those dots, I'm useless. I'm useless. But it's crazy to me that we can look at the same thing. We all have eyeballs. We all have brains. And we can look at something. What's a color? Like we can look at this light and some of us can see different colors. Now, you can, you know, it's really hilarious. I'm like terrible with blues and purples and pinks and stuff. And so I'm looking at this and I get really nervous. What? Oh, it's both? Oh, okay. That's why I'm so nervous. I thought it was blue, but then I'm like, there's a little bit of like pink and stuff in there. Anyway, so it's crazy to me that we can look at the same thing and see something different. I can look at something and be like, that's green, because I'm green, red, colorblind, I think that was called. And I can look at a bush, and I can sometimes not see like little red flowers in it. And people be like, how the heck can you not see this? Are you blind? And I'm like, no, I have 20-20 vision, thank you very much. I'm just colorblind. There's even pictures of things. This is a bit of a throwback, but we've got a picture in there of this classic white and gold dress. Does everyone remember this? I, I said white and gold. Does, let me... 
does anybody, stick your hand up if you see blue and white, blue and black, whatever it is. Do you really? I was sure that when I put that up, put your hand up if you see white and gold. That's amazing. Once again, if you see blue and, what do you see? You see blue and black. How insane is that? That we can look at that. And like, are you colorblind? There you go. Even colorblind. Girls can't be colorblind. That's right. We can look at the same thing. We can look at this picture. And some people see white and gold. And some people see blue and black. This is calling. This is crazy. The church is going to, we're going to have a church split out of this. We're going to have the white and gold service and the blue and black service. <laughs> church, okay, okay. Shh, class, let's come. Let's, hands on heads, everybody. Hands on heads. Oh my goodness, that got rowdy. I did not expect that. That was insane. Take it off the screen, please. It's just, it's, it's too distracting. We need to get it off. There we go. But we can look at the same thing and our eyes can lie to us. Our eyes can tell us different things. Our vision can lie to us. And let me tell you tonight that seeing is not believing. As much as people will tell you that seeing is believing, seeing is believing, seeing is definitely not believing. We saw right there that seeing is not believing because we saw it there. And it's like, it's not telling us the truth. I don't know, I think it's actually white and gold. Like the dress, it's just lighting and stuff, but it's actually white and gold. You 100% thought it was blue and black though, and your vision was lying to you. You know, this is drama, drama. The thing is your, your earthly eyes, your vision, your earthly eyes, the things that you see with, sometimes uh, will tell you lies. They'll tell you things that seem to be true, but they're actually not true at all. In your mind, it makes so much sense. You know, sometimes your earthly eyes will tell you that you should just do whatever makes you happy. So many people these days just say like, just put yourself first, do whatever makes you happy. Why would you worry about anyone else? You're number one. You do you, boo. You're you're number one because you only live once. Your earthly eyes will tell you to focus on yourself over others. Your earthly eyes will tell you to to pursue money and career and all of those things above everyone else because what else would be important? Why would anything else be important? Or why would you give that money away? Because that's yours. You earned that. You can use that yourself. Your earthly eyes will tell you all of those things, but sometimes you have to close your earthly eyes and you have to look through a filter of faith. You need to look through a filter of faith. You know, tonight, let me tell you that when you look through a filter of faith, you, we know that God created the heavens and the earth, and He's given us a purpose. He created us for a reason. When we look through a filter of faith, we know that we should live every day for God as a living sacrifice. When we look through a filter of faith, we know that this life is temporary and that heaven is our destination. When we look through a filter of faith, everything else loses value and only one thing remains. When you look through that filter, everything else that seems so important, money, career, even popularity, fame, all those things that in our minds are like, no, that's so important. Your mind is trying so hard to make you think that that's important. You look through the filter of faith and all of a sudden, that's not important anymore. So let's look at what is faith? The, the, the definition, faith, faith is complete trust or confidence in someone or something. And so tonight, as we look at walking by faith and not by sight, as we look at the filter of faith, we are looking at having complete trust or confidence in God tonight, amen? We wanna walk away from tonight with complete trust and confidence in God. And for all people that are Christians here tonight, we, we should be able to say like, yeah, I have complete trust and confidence in God, but I know from my own life that I don't always have complete trust and confidence. With my earthly eyes and my mind and what I think, it's not always my first reaction to have complete trust or confidence in God. And so we need to remind ourselves to keep looking through that filter of faith. And so let's look at Hebrews 11, verse 1 to 3, a very classic scripture about faith. And it says, Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. For by it the people of old received their commendation. By faith, we understand that the universe was created by the word of God so that what is seen was not made out of things that are visible. It's by faith that we can believe these things. It's by faith that we can believe that God created the universe out of things that weren't seen. Like, how else are you gonna believe that? How are you gonna be a Christian without faith? It doesn't actually make any sense. You're just crazy without faith. And so that scripture goes on to talk about different people in the Bible who had faith and saw great things happen through their faith. It goes on to say that, through faith, through great faith, Abel uh, gave an offering to God that God valued more and found more acceptable than his brother's sacrifice, that he gave an offering that God said yes, and then to, to Cain, it wasn't as acceptable. And it was by faith 
uh, that being that God warned Noah, being consor- uh, concerned of events as yet unseen, it says, in reverent fear, he constructed an ark for the saving of his household. That was by faith that Noah made that decision. It needed to be by faith because he was crazy otherwise. Abel had the faith to know who God was and what he deserved. You know, faith isn't just to like get through something big. Faith is knowing who God is and trusting who God is and knowing that he deserves everything that we have. He gave his best because he had faith and knew who God was. And so Abel knew that. Cain thought he could get away with giving less because he lacked the faith in God. Noah was someone who had, clo- uh, had to close his earthly eyes and look through a filter of faith. You know what was happening at that time? It says uh, in the scriptures that at the time, the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every intention of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And then it says, but Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. Noah was the only person that found favor in the eyes of the Lord, which meant that everyone around, talk about peer pressure, talk about going against the crowd. Noah had to have faith and he had to close his earthly eyes because everyone around him was doing evil things, evil thoughts continually, but he had faith in God. He had faith in those, it would have been, it would have been hard. It wouldn't have been easy at all, but he had faith and he looked through the filter of faith. You know, when you look through the filter of faith, you'll be willing to go further than anybody else. You'll be willing to go above and beyond for God when you have faith, when you don't look at what your earthly eyes are telling you, but when you look through the filter of faith, you'll be willing to go further. Noah was prepared to look stupid to everyone else. He would have looked stupid. He's building this boat, and they're like, what are you doing? But he had faith. He was walking by faith and not by sight. Abel was prepared to go above and beyond in his offering because he was walking by faith and not by sight. So here's my question to you tonight. As we look at Abel, as we look at Noah, as we look back at these scriptures, are you living your life with an awareness of who God is? Are you prepared to look stupid to some people in order to follow God's call for your life like Noah did? Are you willing to invite that friend to church with the chance that they might say no and you'll feel a little bit embarrassed? Are you willing to say no to some things like David did in that video, he, even though Colleen was harassing him and saying fry yay and all these kind of things? Oh my goodness. Are you willing to, to say no to some things, even though everyone around you, even like the whole earth, that's insane, was saying yes to them? Will you go above and beyond in your generosity because you know how much God has given you like Abel did? Or will you cling to what you have because you're walking by sight and not by faith? You're trusting too much in your own understanding and not in God. When we look through the filter of faith, everything changes, everything changes. As we go to another story in the Bible of someone who was walking by faith and not by sight, we go to Matthew chapter eight, verse five to nine. And it says says here, verse five, when he had entered Capernaum, a centurion came forward to him. This is coming to Jesus, appealing to him. Lord, my servant is lying paralyzed at home, suffering, suffering terribly. And he said to him, I will come and heal him. That's important right there. That's underlined. Jesus said, I will come and heal him. But the centurion replied, Lord, I am not worthy to have you come under my roof, but only say the word and my servant will be healed. For I, am too, I, I too am a man under authority with soldiers under me. And I say to one, go, and he goes. And to another, come, and he comes. And to my servant, do this, and he does it. And it continues on to say that Jesus was amazed by the faith of this man. Jesus was so impressed by the faith of this man. And he says, he he healed him right there. In that moment, the servant was healed. He didn't go to his house. The servant was healed in that moment. You know, the Roman centurion was not looking through what he saw in the moment. He wasn't just trusting his flesh. He wasn't trusting what he was seeing. He was looking through a filter of faith and he understood the authority that Jesus had to heal. He knew that Jesus could heal. And because of that faith, his servant was healed straight away away. You know, Jesus, even in this verse, if we pull that, there it is, it says, Jesus even says that he's going to come to his house and he's going to heal him. He's going to go there and he's going to heal him. He didn't say, like in other times in the Bible, Jesus even turns people away and then they press through their faith. They're like, no, please, please heal me. And then he heals them. Jesus had said yes. And the guy knew who Jesus was and he pressed forward and he said, no, no, no. I know you can do it now. God, you can do it now. My question to you tonight, is there something that maybe God is moving in your life 
But maybe he's also saying, come on, come on, press in a little bit more. Seek me a a little bit more in it. You know, ask me for more. Is there something where you're asking for this much, which is nice, it's good. You know, the servant's gonna be healed, but you can have it right now. You can have it right now if you take that step forward and you have faith to seek him and to trust him and know that he can do it and he can heal in Jesus' name. And as we uh, have a time of ministry later, we're gonna be praying for a whole lot of things, but one of those things, we wanna have faith to see healing we believe at Emerge Church, that's, that's something that we can see happen. We have seen it happen, but we want to see it more in Jesus' name. And this verse that we're looking at, looking at, 2 Corinthians 5, verse 7, that we will not walk by faith, not walk by, we walk by faith and not by sight. Oh my goodness, take that out. Uh, it says we walk by faith. We've concentrated on the faith, but it says not by sight. You know, Paul could have just written in there that we, will not, we walk by faith. That's it. We walk by faith. But he specified that we walk by faith and not by sight. We can't walk by sight. We can't look with our own eyes. We need to walk by, uh, by faith. Because if we walk with our own sight, with our earthly eyes, there is just so many things that try to steal our attention. We would know that. I know that every single day, especially now in our current time, there is so many things constantly. It's like people's jobs to be able to grab your attention. Your phone trying to grab your attention constantly, constantly just things trying to steal your attention. I believe, you know, in the, in the word it says that the devil comes to steal. And I believe one of the things that he does is he tries to steal our attention away from God. He tries to steal our attention. When you receive a touch, you know, on a Sunday night, and then you go back into your Monday, and then all of a sudden, boom, your, your attention's been stolen by something else. You know, youth, you go to a youth camp, and you just have the biggest encounter with God you've ever had in your life, and you're like, everything's changed. I'm going to see my whole school saved, and that's good for a couple of days, but then boom, your, your attention gets stolen away by different other things, and as we look with our eyes, as we look with our earthly eyes, our attention can be stolen away, but we need to walk by faith. Sometimes to get to the destination God has for us, we have to close our eyes. We have to actually shut everything off instead of just walking by faith and trying to do it with our eyes open. We need to close our eyes. We always, you know, a lot of the time think that we know the best way, that we know the best way uh, to, to get to our end goal. Have you ever like been trying to do something in life and you try to tell God how he should make it happen? You're like, God, but if, you, if this just happens and then that, like, you know, if you just like, if you get this girl to fall in love me with me, like, I promise, I promise it'll be good. I promise, God, just tell her that she's meant to marry me. Or if you just give me this, this job, God, I promise you, like, I, I, I know this is how it's supposed to go. But no, we need to trust in God. Proverbs 3, verse 5 to 6 says, trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. It doesn't just say to trust him, but do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will make straight your paths. Even with your eyes closed, if you trust in the Lord with all your heart, He will make your path straight. Even if you're, you're, you're just relying on Him, you don't need to do it yourself. You don't need to plan out your steps yourself. He will make straight your paths. And so you may ask, it's about to get a little bit fun. You may ask, how are you meant to see with your eyes closed? Stay with me here. Echo location. Church, this is how, this is how you see with your eyes closed. Does everyone know what echo location is? So what it's called, Pastor Mark? You know animals. All right, echolocation. Yeah, dolphins, bats, and everything like that. All right, we'll get back to that echolocation. This is uh, you'll trust me. You have to stick with me a little bit there. But have you ever like, especially when you're a kid, woken up in the middle of the night? It's pitch black. You get up. You need to get a drink or something like that. And you get up and you're like, all right, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this without turning the lights back on. And you're kind of walking. You cannot see a thing. But you're walking out with your hand in, and then like you feel something. You go around the corner. And I've done this plenty of times before when I was a kid. And then a couple of times, like you'd run into something and just something would fall over and you just ruin it. But you're like trying to do it. And then maybe you're like, oh, you're feeling around to try to see it. Because you cannot see in the dark. You cannot see with your eyes closed. You cannot see in the dark. We were not created to do this. But you know who can see in the dark? Bats. So tonight, I want to welcome you to Bat Facts at Emerge Church. Let's pull it up. Welcome to our first series of Bat Facts in Emerge Church. It's a little bit hard to say. Uh, I feel like I'm going to say something bad. Bat facts. Anyway, bats can see in the dark. They're not blind, apparently. Uh, they can just see in the dark. At nighttime, they can still see because they don't use their eyes. They use echolocation. We need that like bats. And stick with me and you'll find out why. And so some bat facts tonight. That when bats are in the dark, they don't use their eyes to see. They use sound waves to see. Maybe a lot of you know this, but maybe some of you don't. Uh, you know, humans can hear sounds at frequencies from 20 uh, waves per second to 20,000 waves per second. As you get older, that range gets a little bit smaller. 
<laughs> Bats can hear and produce sound waves, uh, sounds at 100,000 waves per second. So that's way out of what we can hear. They can make noise at 100,000 waves per second. They can hear waves, sound waves at 100,000 waves per second. And they can actually chirp uh, 160 to 190 times per second. I don't understand how that works. It doesn't make any sense to me, but I'm walking by faith and not by sight and believing that they can do that. I don't understand how in one second they can chirp that many times, but YouTube said it, and so I believe it. Um, and so what bats do is if they're in the dark and they're looking for some food, they use this chirp that they can just go, and we can't hear it, but they can. If you look it up on YouTube, they slow it down, you can hear it. And they make this noise, and what happens is they, the noise goes out, and then it hits, you know, walls, it hits little bugs, and then it bounces back, and then their big ears catch it. And then because they have such amazing ears and all these things, they can tell where everything is. And so they can tell if there's like little bugs flying around or if it's a big rock or something like that. And so they know where they're going in the dark. We do not know where we're going in the dark. The third and final fact about bats, I don't know if it's already out there, that bats should not be eaten. Uh, and then... I didn't know how that was going to go down. I'm glad that went well. <laughs> so let me tell you, I'm not going to tell you why bats shouldn't be eaten. I think we all know that. But let me tell you, why we need echolocation and how we can have echolocation. Unless you've got really big ears and a really high voice, you're probably not going to be able to do it like bats. But as the band comes up, I'm going to tell you why and how we can use echolocation tonight. Our echolocation isn't a, a high-pitched chirp. Our echolocation isn't really big ears or anything like that. Our echolocation is the Spirit of God. Our echolocation is the Spirit of God, and we need the Spirit of God. If you're going to walk by faith and not by sight, if you're going to take any big faith steps in life, you need the Holy Spirit. You need the Spirit of God. You need the guide. And when we cannot see with our earthly eyes, we need to rely on the Spirit. We need to rely on that guide that God has given us. You know, in that uh, scripture that we read at the start, in 2 Corinthians 5 verse 5, it says that the Spirit has been given as a guarantee. It's been given as a guarantee for us. And the Spirit is our guide. The Spirit will guide you through. When you can't see, when you don't know where you're going, the Spirit will be your guide. And sometimes when you feel like the Spirit isn't speaking, this is where bats come in, this is where echolocation comes in. When you feel like the Spirit isn't speaking, you're like, God's not speaking to me. I feel like God's being silent. I feel like, you know, come on, God, speak to me. Something like that. You know, for a bat to be able to know where it's going, the bat first needs to make some noise. The bat needs to send out the signal first for it to bounce back. Sometimes if you feel like nothing's coming back, sometimes you need to make a little bit of noise. Sometimes you need to, to lift your voice. Sometimes you need to, to fast, to, to pray, to get a little bit desperate. If you're going through something and your first reaction is, God, you're just being quiet. If you just stomp your feet, and you're like, God, why aren't you doing anything? What are you doing? What are you doing? What noise are you making? What are you doing to be able to hear from God? Are you getting on your knees? Are you getting desperate? Are you praying? Are you fasting? Are you having times of worship? When's the last time that you spent a time with God and just, and just felt His presence? Not in church, not in worship time, in your own time by yourself. When's the last time that you even just cried in God's presence? That might be a little bit hard for some people to take in, but God is good and He's not just for a Sunday morning or a Sunday night. God is for us at all times. And I wanna challenge you. I challenge myself with this. Don't let it go too long between times that you have an encounter with God where you just, just sit there and God, you're just so good. God, you are so good. Even in my struggles, even in my pains, you are so good, Father. Even just move to tears, move to emotion because He is so good to us. Don't let it go too long. Pastor Mark uh, spoke in a message recently about, you know, the, your zeal dying. You know, when you're coming to church, sometimes your zeal kind of fades away. And I want to encourage you that if you feel like your zeal has died a little bit, if you feel like you're not as passionate as you used to be, go to that place. Go to that place. Jesus, we used to spend time alone with God. And if Jesus, the Son of God, if He had to do it, if He wasn't exempt from it, then you and me definitely aren't. Jesus would go out and spend time alone with God. He went and spent, before He started His ministry, He spent a long time with God, just waiting on Him, fasting. I want to encourage you. That's a, it's a, a challenge to some people tonight. That if you've been going through something, you feel like you're a little bit frustrated or you're just like, why isn't something happening? Fasting isn't just for pastors. It's not just for even volunteers or leaders. It's for everyone. There's nothing that says that fasting is for anyone in particular. It's for everyone. 
And you can really see a change when you fast and pray over something tonight. That was a little bit off, but I really believe for that, that we need to, we need to, there needs to be more fasting in the church. Whatever happened that, you know, it just became a really specific thing. We should fast more. I'm going to fast more. God, Holy Spirit just said that. There we go. So we need to make some noise. So give, give God something. Uh, you know, it says in the Bible that ask. He wants to hear us ask. He wants us to ask in His name. Ask, seek, knock. He doesn't just say. Sometimes God will speak to us first, but He has asked us. He says, ask, seek, knock. He'll open the door for you. You know, when Jesus went to the cross, when Jesus went to the cross, His, his earthly eyes were very aware of what was in front of Him. He, we spoke about it this morning in communion, that he didn't necessarily want to go through with it. He asked that it could be taken from him. He's like, if this doesn't need to happen, let it, let it come, be passed from me. He didn't want to do it. His earthly eyes didn't do it. But his, when he looked through his eyes of faith, through his filter of faith, he knew that there was more. He knew that it wasn't just a death. He knew that the pain and the suffering would be worth it because he knew that there was something in front of him. He knew what would be happening. He knew that there was heaven opened up for all of us. He knew that freedom was there for all of us, freedom from sin, freedom from shame. He knew that victory was behind this death. And so while his, in his earthly eyes, he didn't want to do it, he went through with it. And thank you, Jesus, for that. You know, one of the last things I want to kind of bring forward as we look at the filter of faith, before we pray, is that this verse is kind of actually looking around the idea of that this life is temporary. This life is, you know, it's like we're just in a tent. This life isn't permanent. It's not the final destination. And as we live this life, as I was saying before, there's so many things that try to steal our attention. There's good things in life. Family is great. Friends are great. All these things are good. Money isn't evil, but these things can try to steal our attention. And let me, as one kind of uh, idea of this, by tomorrow morning, you probably have forgotten my message. By tomorrow morning or tomorrow afternoon, you'll probably be driving home from work and you've probably forgotten completely about this message. And that's just the honest truth. Or maybe by Wednesday, if you're a real Christian. Uh, sometimes I'm not a Christian, real Christian, then, if that's the criteria. Uh, but like, that's just the truth. So much happens. So much happens in our life that our, our attention can just be stolen away. And that is actually why. That's why we need to walk by faith and not by sight. That's why sometimes we need to close our eyes to some things. We need to maybe spend less time watching Netflix and more time in the Word of God. We need to spend less time listening to this podcast and more time just in worship. And I know that's not a, a, probably a very popular challenge. Maybe it is. But it's just, we're called to be different to others. We're called to live a life that's different to the world. Are you living your life different to the world? Or are you watching just as much Netflix and listening to other things than you are reading your Bible and spending time in worship? God has called us to more. And this life is so temporary. You know, there's a quote from C.S. Lewis. I'm pretty sure it's from the book, uh, Mere Christianity. It says, if you read history, you will find that the Christians who did the most for the present world were precisely those who thought most of the next. It is since Christians have largely ceased to think of the other world that they have become so ineffective in this. Oof. I'll read that first part again. I'll read the whole thing again, actually. It's good. If you read history, you will find that the Christians who did the most for the present world were precisely those who thought most of the next. It is since Christians have largely ceased to think of the other world that they have become so ineffective in this. How much are you thinking about heaven? How much are you thinking about eternity? I don't necessarily think about it every day. I should be. I should be thinking about it more because as you look through that filter of faith, as you look through the filter of eternity, it changes how you think, see everything as well. If you know that this life is temporary, if you recognize that this life is so temporary and we have a small time to do what God has called us to do, we have a mission that God has given us, we have a small time to live that out. When we live with heaven in mind, it is so much easier to walk by faith and not by sight. 